Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wookie and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And we're here with Shonen Archive, which I said there at the beginning. I don't know why I say it twice, but we're here in a series. We're back again. We're Shonen back Archive. again. One more time. Uh, a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our known continuous lives or the end of the life of the Earth itself to watching Shonen Jump anime. <laughs> and we are... Currently going through Ginzama, which we were talking about today, but we're also doing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So today we're going to talk about uh, Gintama, which is episodes, let me see, it is 66 through, 66 71. through 71. But before we do that, as we promised at the end of the last one, we're going to do a popularity poll. Because I figured, hey, they the actual animes do that, and I think it's fun to actually look at popularity stuff. So we've put uh, top five characters that, as of this moment... So if you're someone who's seen all of Gintama, don't freak out and start <laughs> listing characters that we have not seen or start making any form of like uh, judgments based off what we have not seen. Of the 60-something episodes we've seen, this is what it's based off of. And then I also have the first popularity poll just to at least take a look at and see how people were feeling at the time. So I'll go first. Mine, I think, is pretty simple. My top five, I'll start with number five. Number five is Tay or Ote, depending on how you want to pronounce her name. I've heard from multiple people, both are valid ways of saying it. Just depends on, I guess, the honorific stuff. Uh, next, followed up by that, number four, uh, Elizabeth. Someone who has greatly, over time, just been amazing at every single time they've used her, which I'm surprised. I think it really is the homeless Elizabeth stuff is what pushed her to be so top of everything. It's kind of crazy to think that she was make it this far, but it, that's how I feel with it. Uh, three, Kagura. Always a good laugh since the beginning I've liked her, and she's kind of just stayed with it. Number two, Katsura. It was very similar. It, th I had to go back and forth from this one, because number one is obviously uh, Gintoki. And both of those characters, kind of depending on what batch of episodes I've seen, one is stronger than the other. Because we've had some more Gintoki-focused episodes, I feel like Gintoki is number one for me at this moment. With Katsura right behind him, but it's literally like neck and neck in my mind. So yeah, there you go. There's my five. Tei, Elizabeth, Kagura, Katsura, and Gintoki. So Zen, how's yours looking like? Alright, so starting at number five, my number mm. five is Takasugi. Mm. He's cool as fuck. Really like that character. I really like the way that he got introduced, where he was just like kind of in an episode being like a threatening dick but he didn't really do anything mm. he was like i just kind of convinced this old guy to make evil robots because i'm there but i'm not like gonna fight <laughs> you or nothing yes um uh i really liked that my number four is okita i think he's mm. funny as fuck <laughs> yeah fair. um number three is kagura my number two is gintoki and my number one is katsura Wow, it's funny that our three are basically, <laughs> we're on the same kind of wavelength on that one. Literally both of us putting Kagura at number three. Uh, man, that's funny how close it was. So let's see, let's go back to the popular. Now this popularity poll, the first one that we've seen here, um, I don't remember when it was done, but based off the characters' rankings, it might depend on it. I can't see the exact date, but here's the very first one, the first one ever. We'll do their top five here. Um, number five was uh, Yamazaki Sagura at number five. Number four, Takatsuji Shinsuke. No, Shinsuke? Well, I don't know why I said that so weird. <laughs> uh, we, uh, I have this issue with Japanese names where sometimes I look at them and I'll just say them completely wrong <laughs> for some reason. Number This is actually very surprising to me. Number three is Hijikata. Made it all the way up to number three. I can number see that. He's, he's probably the one that's the most mainstream popular Shinzengumi guy, I would guess. I would say. I would think so. But then number two is Okita. <laughs> and really? Then okay. Yeah. And then number one is Gintoki with 2,632 votes. The Okita... MC always wins these. Yeah. The, they usually do, unless the MC is not. Unless the... it's my hero. NHA <laughs> Baku always wins. Uh, funny enough, eventually in Dr. Slump, Aureli did lose to Sukasun. Um, really? Yeah, the character I'm that curious. Yeah, yeah, the character that would eventually be the the since a lot of Akira Toriyama's stuff looks exactly the same. He's basically the pre Yamcha, um, except for he's Yamcha. But what if Yamcha was badass? <laughs> That's how I've always described him as. <laughs> That's fine. 
Um, okay, apparently, so. I looked up some where the main character does not win. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently in Hunter x Hunter, Gone never wins. Okay, but to be fair, Which everyone is always, yeah. I, yeah. I feel like that's the one thing I've always heard about Hunter x Hunter, or Hunter x Hunter as I like to call it, is that everyone <laughs> does not like Gone. Yeah, I mean, he usually he's usually a top five, but uh, mm -hmm. Kilawa always gets first. Obviously, we talked yeah. about My Hero, where Bakugo always gets first. Yeah. Uh, apparently, in Attack on Titan, uh, Aaron is never first. It's always <laughs> um, Levi. That's great. Now that makes sense. That's make that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, to be fair, whenever I saw an Attack on Titan collab happening, they always say, "Hey, where's Levi? Not where's Aaron?" So this is this is really funny. Have you read Hikaru no Go? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, the main character did not get first. The guy that got first is just, like, the good-looking guy from the club that teaches him how to play Go sometimes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, That's kind of... Well, Trigger, it depends on who you consider the MC of that series. Um... Mm, Glasses like, Boy got yeah. first. Uh, it's on the list, because I guess they count Yuma as the MC, but I think there's a decent argument that Glasses Guy is also the MC, so... Yeah, I would kind of consider them to, because the, the really the story of World Trigger is kind of like the four characters are the main characters. It's just that Glasses gets the most screen time out of them, followed by Yuma, and then the other two as well, kind of depending on what they need and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, there is Naruto, in which Naruto rarely wins. Okay, I believe It that. is usually Kakashi or Sasuke. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Th that's uh -huh. a cool Check combo. Out. That's that's why uh, Sasuke got the wrestling intro when he showed up to fight Gara because they realized both of these characters are the number one and number two. <laughs> yeah, the most popular one. <laughs> yep. Uh, and Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, Yuji does not win in that. It is usually uh, Megumi that wins that. Really? Megumi wins that? Yes, Gojo is usually second place. I know that's probably who you were Holy thinking. Shit. Yeah, was I was going to be come. first place. Oh, that uh, Yuji must usually be comes in clapping. third. He must be so happy that Gojo does not win those. <laughs> Gojo didn't win, I know. <laughs> <laughs> also, great job, Jujutsu Kaisen. The, both, those two, both of the most top characters currently aren't in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, most of the characters in it right now are um, characters who weren't in that popularity poll. Um, because it they came in late. Like, yeah. uh, Yuta has, I don't think, even been... Actually, I think they held one kind of recently that might have those characters in it. Really? Okay. Um, but I know the first one was, like, the first couple arcs. Um, like, I think, it, I think it was just up to the point of, like, the... Basically, as far as the anime has gotten. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, also, based off of the numbers here, just... Uh, so, obviously, Gintoki's number one with 2,632 votes. Okita came in with 1,515. Hijikata came in with 1,512. Literally three votes away. Damn. From being number two. And then, That's really uh, funny, though, because that, that them yeah. being, like, right there <laughs> is really funny. It is. So close. Takatsuji came in at 1,500, and then... Uh, Yamazaki was 1,458, so pretty close. And then I think for the main characters, number 7 was Kagura with 878, and then right below her was Shinpachi with 873. Elizabeth, from where I can just see here, 374 at 11th place, followed by Tay, who was at 350. And then the person, funny enough, Prince Hada got 174 votes. <laughs> Just barely, Atosa just barely got more than her. The Just Away got 172 and is the 19th <laughs> most. To be fair, I love the Just Aways. I love the Just Aways. There's a Just Away so. cameo in the episodes from today, and yeah. I really like it. I like the two. So, and the very bottom is Tatsumi with 115, which is the Fire Brigade girl. So that's as that's at least as far as they go. Oh, Mus Musashi, aka Homeless Gintoki, got 125 and is 26. That's funny. So yeah, that's the first popularity poll. There was six in all of Gintama, so as we go through it, we will do six more and we'll check up on how people felt as kind of times goes on. I like looking at popularity polls because it really tells you who currently got the best arc in the, at the time or who was the most used at the time, basically. So I think they're fascinating to look at and talk about. Um, I also think uh, it's funny whenever a manga does one and does it really funny. I think, what was it? I think it's in We Never Learn, 
the previous one, because the We Never Learned It, I think, did a manga called Nisoke, something like that. Um, and on the popularity poll, there was a dolphin. So there was a running meme of always voting for the dolphin. And eventually, <laughs> it took until We Never Learned for the dolphin to finally crack the top ten. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, you know about the My Hero popularity polls? Where, like, Naruto's shoes and stuff outrank some of the characters. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, also, I should get my points right. Uh, the Jujutsu Kaisen poll that I talked about was actually the second popularity poll. In the first Ooh. one, Yuji did win. Okay, that makes sense. So, as time goes on. Close. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, Kira Toriyama has some of the best ones in Dr. Slump featuring uh, stupidest characters in which uh, he got uh, fourth place. And his editor got third. <laughs> uh, I th- if we ever go through that those, like fucking hates editors. He does, but <laughs> I think he has. It's, I think again, we talked about this before on Twitter. I think he hates his editors because they makes him do more work. I don't think it necessarily that he doesn't think that their contributions are worthwhile. He doesn't. Yeah, so he's just like much. fuck. He's like, God damn it. He's like, you know what would be really needed right now, you know, to get more female audiences, maybe a little bit more romance to try and get more people outside of your general audience. And then he goes, fuck, whatever. These two are married now, I guess. Are you fucking happy? He's like, all right. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm going to go back and do, can I go back to making my hilarious strip about a man who really wants to t- touch shit? Yes. You can go back to that now. Oh, okay. Let's get into the episodes now. Feel free, as always, to tell us how you feel about the characters right now. I know a vast majority of people have already kind of gone through Gintama, but if you can yeah, put yourself it in the like place, we're, we're behind the. Uh, we are, but they can at least the see here on there. But if you're following along with us, feel free to put it down. And if you're in general feelings, you can always put them down here. All right, Zen. So let's start with episode. 66 dango over flowers or as they call it here substance over appearance the crunchy roll edit calls it uh dango over flowers dango over flowers is a much better name yes it is substance over appearance significantly better name yeah (laughs) go ahead (laughs) um okay so in this one we start out with kitoki eating dangos at like uh one of those like roadside stand kind of things like a dinky old restaurant um, and the old man owner is like talking to him and he's like, yeah, I'm going to go out of business soon. Cause people are eating these exotic desserts. They're like, you know, more modern desserts, like ice creams and cakes and stuff. Like they look, it looks like a modern sweet shop basically. Cause yeah. it's an Amanto owned sweet shop. Um, he says that nobody really cares about eating traditional foods anymore. They want like the coolest new thing. Um, and Gin gives him shit, and then they kind of bond because, like, Gintoki's still holding on to being a samurai, which is, like, an old-timey thing, too, just like Japanese sweets. Um, and then the owner of the sweet shop comes over and makes an order for some of their dango because he's, like, trying to be shitty because he wants to buy the shop because he wants to become, like, another one of the lords of whatever. The four, you know, the, like, the four kings yeah. of that place. He yes, wants to exactly. become one. By making like a little empire um, in the an empire of sweets in the area that they're in, uh, and he wants to buy the shop to do that. Eventually, they make a kind of bet um, where they're going to have like a dongo competition, and whoever sells the most uh, will like if if the old man sells the most, he can keep the restaurant. If the other guy sells the most, he'll give the restaurant to the other guy. Um, and so it starts this kind of like cooking game show, you know, like all the ones on like TV and stuff, mm-hmm. um, where they are trying to beat this big restaurant. They're losing badly because it's very popular. Uh, but then the Odd Jobs yeah. trio show up and just start eating like a, a, an incredible shit ton of dango. Yeah, the um, funny thing is that it looks like it's set up that they're going to lose because it hasn't even started and no one's going to them. But then they find out, like... I was actually kind of confused about what it was because I thought it was just how many people. But it turns out it's just how many people... How much of your food was eaten. It was actually based off of that and not how many people are just in general. Yeah, it's, in it's how many plates of dango you, you empty, basically. Yeah. 
Uh, so if there's more people than you can plate, that then that's a, actually a detriment because it's not helping you. Um, so they're eating just a crazy amount of uh, Dongo from the old man's booth after a really funny like the scene where they walk up to it is really good. <laughs> it's like an old like samurai or like a western thing where they're like it slowly is. walking up. It's really funny. Um, I heard it was free. They... That, that was the, the thing he keeps saying. <laughs> I heard it was a free meal. <laughs> Yeah, and then it finds out that, like, because um, the, the old man's like, I can't believe you're eating so much just for me, but then Gintoki's like, it's free food. Because <laughs> um, an old man and his kids come, and they're like, my kids are starving. Uh, we'll just eat some of the dongo from this booth, because we we're never going to make it to the front of this line. And Gintoki, like, kicks him in the head. And it's is, like, it, actively chasing them away from the table. Is and then can... he gives them one stick, and he's like, one stick of Dongo, <laughs> and they're all, like, crying with happiness. The great, the thing I love is that you think that this was his plan all along, is that, up until this point, you think his plan is actually, like, oh, if we're just eating a whole bunch of... I thought this is the direction the episode was going to go to, because there wasn't a lot of people over there. Eventually, more people were going to go over there. It would be a moment of like, oh, yes, the people actually realize his sweets are good. But no, he just immediately stops everyone from even trying yeah, to eat any of the food. There's later ones, too, where, like, uh, you see him in the background of scenes, like, shooing people away. <laughs> yeah, this is 100%. They did not show up here for any other reason than because there's free food and they're very poor and they need to get as much doggo to eat as possible. <laughs> uh, eventually... Um, Shinpachi and Gintoki are tapped out and so they call in the big guns which is Kagura who has already been eating the whole time but like she still wants more yeah she's um, been eating it with, with rice yeah eventually she gets uh, like Dongo in her eyes and they have to take her away because she's wounded um, and Gintoki stays and he's like desperately trying to, to eat enough um Eventually, the Andromeda side brings in, like, sumo wrestlers, and they start passing out, too. Um, and it's, like, one sumo wrestler and Gintoki left to, to for the winning stick. Like, whichever mm -hmm. one finishes their stick will win. And so the old man just grabs it and shoves it in Gintoki's mouth, <laughs> and he wins that way. Yeah. And then Gintoki gets assaulted by his daughter. Yes, by his... Uh, intentionally comedically unattractive daughter has fantastic childbearing hips though <laughs> yes <laughs> so he says <laughs> yeah it basically ends right there the with the with the dongo and the win for them i don't think there's any like follow-up it's just literally he eats and then it's over right <laughs> yellow yeah i'm here Okay, my bad. So I'm, I've been having a little bit of internet trouble right before here, so I'm really afraid at all times. So if I say... <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay, good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah this was a cute episode. It was nothing special, but it was cute. I think it was a good starter for what we were going to see here. It was it was uh, a cute setup at the beginning. It was actually getting a little bit... I thought it was going to be a little bit annoying because some of the jokes weren't necessarily landing for me. Uh, mainly because when they enter the sweet shop and it's just literally them saying panties over again... <laughs> As someone who yes, that was getting tiring. Yeah, that was a little bit tiring, and I say that as someone who enjoys a good panty joke and stuff like that. As someone who's gone through a lot of harem stuff, I kind of have a, I I have a built-in mechanism against this. And even for me, I was like, ah, they're not even showing anything. It's just really just saying the word. So it really didn't. Yeah, do it was all of it was just like ah, panties over and over again. And I was like, yeah. okay. It might yeah. maybe it's a cultural thing of this would make a whole lot of sense if you had been in a situation like this. But for me, it was just kind of annoying. But then when the actual contest started up, it was really funny. Um, when he does the kick to the father with who has like seven kid, like <laughs> nine kids, and he goes, "You cannot eat at the Sakamoto table." <laughs> yeah, that it's like their family table. Yeah, that right when that ha right <laughs> when they show up and they're getting ready for it, I think the episode really kicks in and it's super enjoyable and cute from then on in. Uh, they also do like this intense parody of apparently it was a um, a Japanese movie uh, with I forget like there was a translation note about it, but the fact that it was like they were doing a super dramatic because again they treat us as this one dongo is gonna save their entire family. <laughs> 
Yeah, and they it's... make like a big deal about it because uh, yeah, he hands him the one stick of Dongo, and it's like I, I don't remember what it said. It was parodying, but it was like uh, the the father like takes it and starts crying, and is like, "We won't starve to death." <laughs> yeah, they treat it very seriously. Um, I think some of the funniest actual episodes are when the specific crew is acting like a bunch of assholes and suffers zero repercussions from it. And I think this is basically the acting... always funny in Philadelphia strategy. Yes, and this is definitely one of those because they go full on like because at one point like Shinpachi is getting ready to like use them as like takeaway. He's like, oh, I'm going to save some for later. I'm going to heat them up. And then, like, they're going to be just as new. And then he goes, like, the hell kind of life are you living? <laughs> why, why do you? And um, the homeless man, Musashi, who we've been calling uh, Homeless Gintoki because that was <laughs> the role he played for a brief moment. But apparently they've been going with his that his name is uh, Musashi. Uh, he's brought in as the judge, and I thought it was funny, because he only has one line, which is, you'd better eat while you can. So the idea of them bringing in a homeless man to judge a food competition? And the with... funny part is that they keep they keep interpreting you better eat while you can to mean basically whatever they want it to mean at the time. Yeah, they he stops trying after the third one. He's like, it's good. Like, they ask him the rulings on rice. Like, he's like, sir, what, what do you think about that? You better eat it while you can. So you're saying um, that eating it with rice is perfectly acceptable. And then he just, like, nods his head and he's like, all right, <laughs> we'll allow it. Uh, but then he denies the Shinfachi stuff and Shinfachi's bummed out about that. And then it's really funny. It was really funny. I really like that. Um, I liked when it was just uh, <laughs> when they go into overdrive and they just start chucking the balls, the dongo balls into Kagura's mouth. Yeah. Because <laughs> at a really certain funny. point. When they when they're throwing it at her, she's going wow, 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 and then at some point she brings in a bowl of rice, so she's eating. Yeah, both so she of opens those. her mouth and catches the dongo, ducks down, eats some rice really fast, looks back up and opens her mouth to catch more. Yeah, it was really good. And then when they take her out, I thought it was also very funny. Um, there's also a part where he puts on a bandana. I forget what the bandana is, but it says, like, sweet something, and he goes into, like, ultimate, like, this is his ultimate Yeah, stand. that's when he calls himself, like, the sweets king. The Sweets King, yes. Uh, so it was really funny. It was really cute, uh, even though the beginning of it was a little bit eh. But it eventually kicked into it, and I'm, by the end of it, I was really enjoying it. So that in the end, that's all I would really need. Um, I also did like the kind of like story of, like... It's similar to, I guess, um, I guess Gypsy Danger in Pacific Rim. The idea of analog versus digital, of analog winning the day. So appreciate that. Like yeah, it. that was a neat little way where that they kind of like codified it as like everything's digital nowadays. But me and and Gintoki were analog people, and I was like, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. So yeah, pretty good, very enjoyable. And you feel about the same? Is there anything specific you want to call out for it? No, it was just a cute little, cute yeah. little thing. That's good fine. way to kind of start it off. Yeah. All right. And next, let's move on to episode sixty-seven. A two-parter. First part is f called For the Wind is the Life, which is, I think, in the last episode, um, they say specifically this is the the first part of this episode is for the Create a Manto win a winner. Uh, someone got, there was a design contest, so the person who created a specific Amanto, they got an entire, like, little episode based off of it, and so that is the oh, cool. um, thing based off around it. And then number two, the ideal girlfriend is still Minami-chan, which is the... We'll get into it as soon as we get there. <laughs> There's some stuff happens. <laughs> Zen, tell us about part one, though. The wind is the life. Uh, part one, Gintoki crashes into an Amanto delivery girl uh, who must always move or she'll die. Um, it destroys her scooter, so they take uh, his scooter to do the rest of her deliveries. Um, it's mostly just comedic bullshit of trying to deliver parcels for her. Uh, and then Okita shows up and is like, hey, um, there's a, they're, they're trying to bomb embassies right now by using package delivery boys to, to deliver bombs to embassies, so you better be careful. Uh, and then they're pretty sure that they have one. And so they, uh, Gintoki keeps hitting these different buttons because the old man mechanic guy is like, yeah, I upgraded your thing. And Gintoki's like, oh, great. And he hits the button. And then the guy's like, you should never hit that button. 
And he just like keeps progressively doing that over and over again, where he yeah. keeps making it worse. Uh, they finally save the day by getting the bike to fly. And they kind of like have this bonding moment while they're flying in the air. And then the recording kicks on from the old man again. And he's like, yeah, whatever you do, you should never use the flying button because if you do, the bike will explode in like a minute. It doesn't have enough power to do that. Uh, and the bike does explode. Yep. Uh, as the explosion goes off, she's like giving a monologue of how much she loves Edo. And like, I did it. I made it in this city. <laughs> And she's addressing her creator, which is Sato-san from Tokyo, which is the person who won the contest. That's really funny. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it was uh, really nice. Yeah. And then uh, there's also, like, a background plot going on with Hasegawa, where he's, like, oh, trying yeah. to get his wife back. <laughs> kind of. It was... I, I thought it was really funny, because out of nowhere, they have, like, this dramatic moment of Hasegawa answering the phone call, and his wife called him, and he's like, why are you calling me? You left me. And she's like... Do you know what today is? No, you wouldn't. Never mind. He's like, don't call me if you don't have anything related to me. And he hangs up. And then it revealed one of the deliveries was a 10 year, happy 10 year anniversary cake from him. Yeah. And then they just like slam it in the woman's <laughs> face and keep going. Which is great because it continues the fact that we don't know what the hell Hasagawa's wife looks like. Yeah, because the- she's covered up by the cake. Yeah. I thought that was really good. And I was it's like, funny too because like, when when they hit her with the cake, he's still giving his, like, dramatic loner speech of, like, happy 10th anniversary. I love <laughs> you. And she's, like, standing there covered in the cake that Kentucky and this girl slam into her. It was so good. I also love it because it also continues, <sighs> Hasegawa's life continuously being in some ways ruined by Kentucky. <laughs> Like, even when he's not, sh- he has no idea that he would be related to this. Somehow, Kentucky has made things slightly <laughs> worse. Just a little bit. So fucking good. So good. Um, then one of the other, the other delivery before that was also Zenzo waiting for his Gintama packages for special figurines. And then, of course, they just toss it and his, <laughs> his poor figurines are just fucking destroyed. I also like in the beginning where there, when he's like... You can't even stop moving. How are you going to make deliveries? And she just, like, baseball pitches it through the window <laughs> of the building. Really? Because I was asking the same thing. How does this person function in general if this is how they have to live? But they they apparently also realize, yeah, it would be kind of hard to live a life like this. It's a also, pretty one intense... joke that I thought was really funny. And it was really minor. Um, but it's when... After they've done most of the deliveries, but they're that, right before Okita talks to them, mm-hmm. uh, and Gintoki's just muttering to himself, like, yeah, it seems you did a pretty good job. I mean, but some of the packs just got messed up. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even it was notice. funny that he was, like, trying so hard to rationalize that everything's fine. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> also liked how quickly Okita, I think for the first time, is just like, one of the very few times Kentucky would actually need him to help him out in a situation. He's just immediately like, oh, I know this guy. Hey, no, no worries. Psh, are you on a date, man? He's like, no, I'm not on a date. Please help me. Ah, you're on a date. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, ah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you're See good. Ya. <laughs> ah, you know, I don't want to mess up your date. Let me just tell you about this real quick. And he leaves <laughs> one of the very few times. Because I think it's usually Okita who stops him whenever he's, like, somehow breaking a law randomly by himself, right? Yeah, it is. So it's really funny for the first time he actually doesn't try and stop him in any way. Um, I also like the end bit being a direct reference to Kiki's delivery service. <laughs> As well, the the ending monologue to the to her creator was also a reference to Kiki's delivery service. It was also a really good bit where... Um, he finds out the brakes of the motorcycle are destroyed or are not working and he goes like oh man old man if you had all this time to work on stuff why didn't you fix the brakes and then he sees that a radio has been installed he's like if you couldn't install a radio why didn't you fix the brakes and then the radio message is basically uh, i can't hear you i'm assuming you can hear me um i just called to tell you i really shouldn't have installed the radio i didn't fix the brakes i spent all that time <laughs> working on the radio yeah, I like all of the all the radio messages are really funny because yeah. every time they're like shitting on Gintoki, they're like assuming you because I know who you are, you <laughs> fucking idiot. You probably hit this button, didn't you? You didn't wait for me to finish saying anything. You hit it, didn't you? Well, that's bad. Don't do that. 
<laughs> also, while he's telling him to say stuff, I think this also gets carried on into the the next arc that goes on because he acts like this too, where he's like specifically saying something, but then Gintoki immediately acts on impulse because he thinks that it's gonna be good, and then it just turns out to be complete shit. <laughs> he's like, I yeah, it's wait. like even worse than he thought it was gonna be. <laughs> yeah. So it was a good, a good first party here. It was really cool that they made an entire episode based off of a Amato that some dude just, some kid just designed. I think that's kind of rad. Yeah, that slams. Yeah. So good first parter, and now let's go into the second part, which is the ideal girlfriend is still Minami Chan, which is a Sachan episode. So get ready for some butt stuff. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it's about. <laughs> Yep, it's a Sachan episode. Works exactly like every other Sachan episode. Uh, she gets hired <laughs> to kill someone. Um, that someone is a doctor that happens to be working at a hospital where Gintoki is hospitalized because of the explosion from the previous part. Um, she is unable to perform her assassination properly because she gets too into the fact that she's Gintoki's nurse. Um, eventually she finds out that the doctor she's supposed to assassinate because he, like, steals organs and sells them uh, is after Gintoki's organs. So she does eventually appear and save the day. Uh, and then, I mean, that's pretty much the whole episode. There's there's some good jokes in there with uh, Zenzo. Yeah, because every awesome. single time he, like, her whole thing this whole episode is that she's switching between lovesick pig mode and <laughs> um, assassin mode. The two and other every one, time you thought... Zenzo appears and speaks at all, she goes into assassin mode <laughs> and shoves something up his butt. Yep. Just when you thought goblin mode was the only mode women go into, we now present you love struck pig mode and <laughs> assassin mode. <laughs> the other two modes women go into. Um. Yeah, I really liked. Ended up like. Funny enough, apparently he's been like. I completely forgot this, and we completely forgot this. Zenzo has had this butt stuff since the first time we've seen him as the ninja in the religion episode. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's always, always had the problem. Yes, he's always had the butt stuff problems. This one is, I think, the most graphic they've ever been with it because it's them literally shoving stuff up his ass. Yes. <laughs> uh, one of the. F- funniest moment because some this was such a moment that someone that i knew hit me up on discord and said can you please explain to me what's going on here and it was the ed bit with sachan where she doesn't have her glasses and she's like oh my god i'm so sorry gintoki that you're so injured because of me i love you so much and it's revealed that it's actually um zenzo's uh bare ass that farts in her face and uh-huh. there's like a there's a there's like a specific clip where it's just her hugging his ass, and I posted that on Twitter, and then I got a message on Discord saying, "Please tell me what's going on. What are you watching?" <laughs> and I had to explain it. So <laughs> a lot there was a lot of butt humor in this one, but I I think because they went as far as they did, I actually liked it a whole bunch. Yeah, some of it was funny. Uh, like when he's trying to pull the candle out of Zenzo's ass and everyone walks in right at that moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kagura's so disappointed in him. Yeah, Kagura's so upset. She, like, runs <laughs> off crying. Um, and then Hasegawa's like, I'll explain, don't worry. <laughs> and, and they all leave. Uh, and, he's and like, then oh. I think the funniest part of that joke, though, was uh, them arguing about it after the fact, where he's like, what am I going to do now? Even if I explain, it's going to be super awkward. <laughs> yeah, then Zenzo says, like, what if I go with you? No, that will make it even yeah, worse. Yeah, he's like, what if I go with you to explain it? He's like, no, it's even worse. Yeah, I also think this episode's so funny to me is that Zenzo and Gintoki are actually just at peace with each other. They're not really fighting each other. They're just kind of Well, just... I think it's because they have a, a common enemy in... Sachan, Sachan, in this yeah, it, that, yeah, it's a hundred percent that. I also like in the beginning because this is a continuation of the previous episode where uh, he got hit by an explosion. Uh, she talks to the doctor about like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about his trademark hair? He's like, that's what you care most about me. He's like, he's suffering from comedy syndrome. It should yeah, be better. Yeah, comedy, uh, comedy damage hair syndrome. It'll go back to normal in a couple scenes. And she's like, no, put it back to normal now. <laughs> now. Uh, that was pretty good I also liked when um, 
she kept going through love struck pig mode and assassin mode ended up being i think this ends up being her uh her best episode so far and i think it's literally because they need zenzo because you also need someone to for her to she needs to be able to go through both modes of her personality so she's she's never on one for too long basically yeah switching back and forth between like her two personalities is a lot funnier Yes. Than just making her the joke being that she's horny all the time. Yes, I think that ends up working better. Because especially when she's like, oh my god, Gintoki, because of my failure to do this, I've let you down so badly. And then they show, like, Gintoki, he's about to get surgery on. And I think they said the same. Zenzo's also about to get surgery on. And she's like, Zenzo, I I could I don't really care for. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, don't, don't really care what happens to him. I also like the gag of um, when he's going to do the, um, they do an x-ray from the evil doctor, and he basically says, you're at high risk for diabetes, yet you continue to eat sweets, and then Gitoki's response is, I've decided that I'll live a thick, rich, creamy life, however short. Yeah, however short it is. And then he shows up like a fake ex. He's about to. Show- he's like, I want you to look at these X-rays. And he goes like, No, anything you show me will just make me feel worse. <laughs> but then he shows up like the sweets and the urine will interact with each other, and your testicles will explode. <laughs> and he's like, No. He has like this dramatic face of like, No, <laughs> not that. Anything but that. And then for Zenzo, he does basically the same thing, except for he just says something will explode, and he goes like, so easily? <laughs> Why? I also like the part where um, Zenzo's like, uh, he can't pull the candle out of his ass himself because he's scared that he's going to pull out something important, too. <laughs> and Gintoki goes, what are you, keeping your hopes your and dreams in there? <laughs> oh, yes, it was very good. <laughs> it, was, it was very good. In general, this might be the best... Two-parter where both episodes were comedy and both of them were pretty damn solid. Yes. Uh, I also like the one where she's like, um... Let me, let me change your bandages. And he's like, I literally just got them changed. And she closes the, the curtain. And then she goes to change his bandages and all she does is tie herself up. And he's like, how is that helpful? <laughs> nothing, nothing. You're helping you. He's like borderline impressed, which I think is the funny bit. Because I think he calls it amazing. Yeah, but he's he does. still screaming at her. Yeah, he's just constantly berating her in this very instance. <laughs> uh, so yeah, good stuff. Good job on this one. Good, good, good job. So it is really funny to me because again, as we're gonna go into some later ones, but it was it hit me after I see seventy one. It's like the specific emotions that I'm feeling. It's insane to me that a couple of hours ago, I was literally just watching a, a ninja woman hug a man's ass. Mm-hmm. And here we are. Yep. <laughs> That's something that I love about Gintama. It does so well with that. Yes, I was trying to does. explain to someone why it's so good. Because they were like, oh, I don't really like a comedy series. And I was like, no, because Gintama will go between like 30 straight minutes of talking about how the show's name is really close to the word for testicles and then in the very next scene it'll have like the gintoki and katsura fight scene like in the next episode yeah it you just gotta let it happen yes exactly it's definitely something you kind of just enjoy the ride and you just kind of see where it's taking you and i think it does a very good job with that (sighs) now let's go on to the next episode episode 68 uh as crunchyroll calls it Oh, also, the end preview of this one is built to be kind of like a horror movie, because the next episode was supposed to take place on Halloween. Um, episode 68, like a haunted house, life is full of, filled with horrors, or as they have it here, like a haunted house, life is filled... Oh, no, the exact the translation. Thing. Yeah, Not exactly bad. the same. <laughs> Some things translate perfectly, <laughs> specifically that statement. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it's like. Uh, this episode is pretty simple. It's pretty much just they, they're they supposed to be helping with a haunted house. Uh, they clearly don't want to fucking be there. And so the guy keeps yelling at them to take it more seriously. Um, they just kind of keep fucking off and not really doing it. Uh, a couple of customers come in. It's like a father and a son. And Kagura doesn't understand the the Japanese myth she's supposed to be. And so she fucks it up. And what in what I think might be the funniest scene of the entire episode is she's <laughs> laying on the ground with all these shattered dishes because she fucked everything up. And she's like, oh, my dishes. And this 
little child who was terrified five seconds ago is so overwhelmed with pity for her that he sets a piece of candy on the ground in front of her and walks away. Then <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ote shows up and uh, she's actually afraid, but she's because of who she is when she gets scared, she starts beating the shit out of everything and like destroying it all. Yep. Um, she grabs her friend in such a panic that she starts like crushing her rib cage. And so the, the person who runs the haunted house runs up to try to help, but he's in his dead samurai, like zombie outfit and it scares her. So she, uh, knocks the shit out of him. Um, all the guys make fun of him. And then Gintoki's like, ah, I don't give up yet. And he figures no one will come anymore. And he starts like getting down on himself and, uh, And I think after the, I think after they try and cheer him up, that's when Hidora comes in. Yeah, when the the scary alien neighbor. Yes, that's Hidora. Um, and then the old man is more scared of him than anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then Hidora is also like, um, oh, I'm a big scaredy cat. Like I get terrified of shit super easy. Huh? Isn't that weird? Mm. Um. One of my favorite quotes from his is, "Oh, why are you crying <laughs> with the giant?" Yeah. <laughs> evil face um he eventually just is like i had a good time and he leaves and then it turns out that the guy runs this thing every year because of um he always like sucks. ran away from stuff in his past including his wife and he misses his wife and uh he goes out just to, to scare someone because he wants to finally see something through to the end and it ends up being his wife um they don't end up actually resolving anything and so they all are kind of like, huh, they both just walked away. <laughs> I, th- I think they say specifically, it's like a throwaway line. Um, he's the one who brought up separation and the wife didn't really have a thing to say back to him. So basically it was all in his head. And all the problems that he had specifically, he was creating them himself because of the lack of confidence in anything. He just assumed that his wife didn't want him, but she was actually yeah. okay with him. Yeah, and then I think Kagura has a throwaway line too, where it's like, hmm, they're both hiding from their feelings. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is pretty good. And then, uh, yeah. They just kind of end the episode going, huh, we didn't really get anything done. No, and there's we need a punchline, and then they just say the word punchline, I think, at the end. And then they also make note that the old man didn't scare anyone at all, which was their main mm-hmm. reason for doing anything. So yeah, this ended up being a very chill episode. It was just kind of like, I guess it's funny because this episode begins with them being like, it's hot, the episode's canceled, we don't want to do it. Alright, that sounds good. I also, yeah, Kagura has a good one there, where uh, she's like, yeah, my script says I'm a Yato, which means I'm weak to sunlight, so I don't think I should have to work. (laughs) And they're like, stop ruining it like that. Don't use your character created backstory on us. They also talk about, like, hey, we can take a break, right? Like, Jump does it all the time when they're looking for research material for the next thing. We can just do that, right? Yeah. (laughs) And then when the episode starts, the, like, little red text narrator basically goes, like, they did not take a break. We are actually doing something this week. So, deal with it. Um, The episode, this is also the one of the very few times, I finally realized that a lot of the dudes in Gintama suffer from being divorced syndrome <laughs> yes they do a lot of these dudes have either lost their wife or are in the process of losing their wife or are <laughs> trying to get back their wife it's like the number one concern of most male um side characters in Gintama is there's a good chance if they have a wife they will lose her in some manner uh-huh at least this is one of the very few ones that's actually able to get it back, so I thought that was nice. Um, I did think it was funny that the two, uh, the two of the two characters, not counting the little kid, who were actual Gintama characters who showed up to the haunted house one, it was the actual worst ones for the old man to run into, which were Tay and uh, Hidora, because it was literally like the worst people you would try and want to scare for various uh-huh. reasons. Um. That kid bit was really funny because they go on for such. They're like pretending to be um, hidden. He's because the kid starts off. He's like, "I'm so scared, Dad. Are you gonna be with me?" He's like, "Don't worry, son. I'll get you through it." And then the they're like in the they cut to behind a wall. He goes like, 
I don't remember my line. What are we supposed to do? And yeah, they're completely to... audible to the <laughs> outside of where they are. He's like, I, I need dishes. It's like, my story is I think I need nine dishes. I'm missing a dish. I have... That means I have eight dishes. I'm missing two dishes. And then he goes like, did say you, you're missing two dishes. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, Shabaj's like, they just have less dishes. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Kyra goes, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. I need the right amount of dishes. <laughs> Uh, and then when she walks out and she breaks all the dishes, and then later on the guy's like, "Please don't drop your dishes. We're gonna waste all the all the budget on getting more dishes." The and, look on the little kid's face when he gives her that piece of candy is so fucking funny to me. It is really funny. It, it, there was also a very good bit because they also go back to her. She's like, because he's like, you know what? I really help. The kid's basically like, I help someone, Dad. And he's like. Son, I'm proud of you. And then they cut to Kagura. She's like, I have a piece of candy. <laughs> and she's yeah, just I got like, some candy. <laughs> she's just so happy about it. And then they cut to the old man. He goes like, I have some candy. He's like mocking her. <laughs> like doing the same. Uh... Yeah, the exact same voice and like pose. <laughs> yeah, which was really funny. <laughs> uh, I also like in the beginning when they were like trying to make up horror costumes. Um, he, they dress up as completely different characters. I think uh, Shinpachi ends up being a Yakuza ghost. Um, Gintoki is literally just Jason, and Kagura is some version of Chucky, but not exactly Chucky. Um, mm-hmm. but it's I supposed to be like adult. Bit, that bit too, because when he goes, "Why would Jason be with a um a, a samurai, samurai ghost?" Because my name's not Jason. I'm Jackson, an original <laughs> character I created. He hit him with what? That's my OC. That's that was my so OC, <laughs> Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> so good. I also like that with the entire time they're talking, the chainsaw is still going off as well <laughs> when he's talking in his Jackson mode. Yeah, and he's like, "This is too much," and Kentucky's like, "No, no, you got to be extreme like this because all the kids are so jaded." Oh, uh, that was good. And then when they're trying to scare Hidora, they start doing the bit about the the missing um, plates. Oh, I'm missing a plate. And then they cut to uh, Shinpachi. He's like, Frisbee. Uh, one Frisbee. Two Frisbee. Mm-hmm. I'm missing a Frisbee. And he's like, that's not your backstory. And then they cut to Gintoki. He's like, one garlic. Two gar-. He's dressed up as Dracula. <laughs> yeah, because he's a Dracula. It's like, uh, missing my garlic. He's like, that's not even what you're supposed to do. You're, that's your weakness. <laughs> and then he's like, and, and then when they're trying to get him to do it, they're like, snucku, 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 snucku. They're like chanting snucku the entire time. He's like, do they want me to join? Do I have, they gave me these snacks. Do they want me to go in there with the snacks? And they're really like setting it up like he's going to be number, like he's finally going to get a scare. And then Hedora like punches his lights out. He's like, it was all good fun, but killing is wrong. You almost stepped on a ladybug. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's good. So yeah, this, I like this episode, but I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it is horror themed. And I love me some good old Halloween type episodes. So this was a f- just a good sit back, relax, hear some s- silly, spooky stuff. And that's uh-huh. it. Yeah, it's good stuff. And also, like, the end bit was it kept with the spooky thing. And the next episode preview was a horror movie like introduction for um, for the next episode because it was like a headless body. And you know how the next episode starts with a, um, a head in the trash? Uh-huh. That spooky commercial, so it, it was kind of, in a funny way, it was kind of misleading, but it was still well done the way they did it. I also like the, 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 when it goes black and white to make it look like the ring, when uh, they're trying to scale Hedorah, <laughs> when they're actually yeah. taking it serious. I thought that was really well done. <laughs> so, and in a lot of ways, it actually felt like the way they said in the beginning, where it's just like, ah, it's a lazy summer day, just kind of don't want to do it, I just want to relax, and I feel like that's what this episode is for me. It's yeah, like, ah, nothing, I just want... Nothing too heavy. Yeah. Let me just see these characters do some stuff, make some jokes, let's go, and I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> so, it ended up working out. Especially because the next three episodes are literally the almost polar opposite of the the previous three we talked about. Yes. In a good way. But let's go into it. Is there anything else you want to say specifically about this episode before we move on? No. All right. 
episode 69. We made it, Zen. Nice. Hey, hey let's <laughs> nice. go. <laughs> this episode is called uh, Please Help by Separating Your Trash on Crunchyroll or Please Cooperate to Separate the Trash for a Collection, as it is called, I guess, Pure Roma, you're Romanized or something. Pure translation. Zen, tell us what it's about. So there is a PSA in the beginning. It's posed like a like a horror story of uh, this woman showing up to a trash person, and then her head is in the bag, and then the trash man's like, "You're combustible garbage. You shouldn't be out today." <laughs> um, and she says, "Like, sort your trash properly, or I'll haunt you." And then Kentucky realizes that he did not sort his trash properly because he put the jumps out, which is the exact same thing he did in the last episode where they talked about the trash. Yes. A good um, follow-up. Yes. Um, Kagura comes out in the middle of the night and starts, like, spooking him by No, humming, no he uh, wakes her up specifically to watch him get the jump stuff. <laughs> Because he's, he's like, why am I awake? He's like, uh, you know, there's a trash out there. I threw away your favorite magazine. You should go get it. And she's like, what? No, I'm not doing that. And then he's like, okay, just stay there while I go get it. Then. And then she does the bit where she starts playing the spooky theme. Yeah, she's like humming the spooky song to herself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually he sees like a disembodied head in the trash and freaks out. And then... Um, they sit down to breakfast after it's revealed that Kagura like hums spooky music to him while he sleeps. <laughs> while he was waking up, she was still humming the fucking song. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no wonder I have shitty dreams. <laughs> um, and then Kagura's sitting there with the disembodied head that they found in the trash, and she says it's an egg cracker, and Gintoki's like, what the fuck? That's not, that's not a real thing. And, and she's she like, no, because you see, whenever you get an egg, you always want to break it on someone's head, but that's mean. So you shouldn't do that. <laughs> so that's what this is for. Um, And then she fucking chucks an egg at it? Yeah, she smashes an egg on its head after that. <laughs> um, Sadaharu ends up grabbing it, and they're like fighting with Sadaharu to get it back. And then it turns out that this thing is like a, uh, like a robo-maid. Mm. Um, it's like a popular thing. Yeah, Shinpachi, of course, is the one who knows what a robo maid is because that's just right up his fucking thing. Yep, 100%. Um, they take the head over to the old man, the the mechanic, the old man. He's in a lot of these episodes this week. Um, yes, he is. It's the return. Yeah, I think uh, Haragi Gen Genje, Gen 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 They usually call him old man. Yeah, they just call him old man. So we'll um, be calling him old man from this point forward. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> He's uh oh yeah, I know this, blah blah blah. My old <laughs> robot rival guy makes them. Um Yeah, he kind of goes like, Are you still like he's he kind of under his breath, he's like, Are you still kind of doing this? Like what mm. it's very much a like he's kind of disappointed in knowing that the dude who's doing this is still kind of making robots like this. Yeah. Um He tries to repair it. And he turns it into a Gundam. <laughs> and Kentucky's like, this is not this is not what we want. You should be making it look like uh, um, what you think the ideal woman looks like so that we can sell it for a lot of money. And he goes, okay, okay, I got it. And then he comes back, and it's just the Gundam again, but with a giant ass. Um, which is one of the better jokes <laughs> of the episode, actually. Um, <laughs> this is a humongous ass on this Gundam. <laughs> yeah, it's just I, huge. I, I also liked it when he's specifically talking about when he, she shows up at the Gundam body, he says, it'll withstand a year-long war. Yeah, and he's like, we don't need it to do that. And he goes, no, you see, just like a maid, she can get behind this shield and watch a family's <laughs> problems. Very good justification. I would love a Gundam maid, <laughs> especially the one he designed. Oh, uh, it's really good. Mm. And then they're like, "Why? Why? What is it with the butt?" And when he makes the giant ass, he's like, "Oh, you see, because now she's got like, uh, she'll bear healthy children." And Kentucky's like, "That's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> you, you judge women in a weird old man way." <laughs> uh, 
And then she also shows off the gun, and it reveals that this was the trickiest part, and it just shoots soy sauce. Yeah, the gun just shoots a soy sauce dispenser. Um, <laughs> eventually, I think they get... Um, he asks for money for all this, and he get they get kicked out. Yeah. And they go back to their place. And then I believe they get attacked by uh, the the evil robots at this point because there are people knocking on the door and they're like oh we've we've heard there's a robot suspected of murder here uh and then the the robot head is like i don't detect any life signs in there i'm pretty sure the things at the door aren't human um and they're like oh fuck and it's it's the the currently still living partner of the creator of the robot and um two of two other robots that attack them they yes. kind of run away for a bit. Uh, Shimpachi takes the head and runs, and Gintoki are like is like Kagura and I will fight off the the army of maids because like as they're escaping, there's like a giant army of robot maids that show up. Yeah. Um, and I think right before he tells them to go off, is this when it starts crying? Yeah, the robot cries, and then they're like, you know, robots aren't supposed to have emotions, and uh, they make a big deal out of it because the the character, the cast, kind of like bonds with her a little bit over that, and that's why they give her to Shimpachi to to take away. Yeah, to go to uh, the old man's place, and they'll hold him off, and they end it with a dramatic shot, like one of the, one of the the classic anime like uh, super detailed faces of everyone uh-huh. <laughs> as like stuff goes on, which I always appreciate whenever any anime does that. I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's red. Um, so before we get into the next one, which is the continuation of this one, I'll give some notes I have for this episode here. Um, I really like the beginning bit where she's humming the theme, even though this is, I think, a show neither one of us will know because it's Japanese. Uh, the mystery show is called Yo no Mo Kimoyo no Na Managatari, Tales of the Unusual, which I think was a reference to the detective episode. Remember when they were doing all the detective stuff? I think that was one of the shows that was being parodied at the time, I think. Mm, okay. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, either way, I thought it was funny because when she starts uh, <laughs> humming the theme, he starts doing an offbeat version of Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. <laughs> yeah, to like hype himself up. <laughs> yeah, to hype himself up, which is really funny. And then the, his neighbor is like, what are you doing? And he's like... <laughs> Some people are trying to sleep. He's like, "Hey, you! You want to?" It's a very like uh, stereotypical New York. Hey, yo, what what are you doing out there? He's like, "Hey, you want to see me pick up this jump?" He's like, "No, you're weird. I'm gonna call the cops." <laughs> and then I think he was also yelling at Kagura because he was assuming that it, uh, he he didn't want to get in the. But he was like, "See, Kagura, people are trying to sleep here. You need to calm down." Uh, the Gundam bit was very funny. Uh, even if the joke is literally just putting it, it is really funny to just put an ass on this robot. Yeah, the whole joke is just that he puts a giant ass on the the robot maid, but it's really funny. Yes, it is. Um, it also introduced the soy sauce, which would come become important in some <laughs> some upcoming episodes. The the thing that shoots soy sauce. Um, when they go to reboot her, because when they go back home, they decide to press her mole on the top of her head to see if that will make it work. And she basically starts turning on like a Super Famicom. Yes. And And when they boot her up, they have a thing called the Fio OS, and it's made to look exactly like the Dragon Quest logo. And everything she mentions is basically references to Dragon Quest nonstop. <laughs> like all the day, da- all the uh, data was deleted. Would you like to? Uh, would you like to start a new adventure? Hello, my name is Marie Antoinette. Would you like to give a name? He's, I think he's like, would you like to give a name? He's like, yes, your name's Tama. He's like, okay. That's they, that she basically goes like, my name is this. He's like, she completely ignored <laughs> the name we gave her. <laughs> but this goes back and forth, and they keep going like. Um, <laughs> which he's like saving now. Please remember this password. And he was like, "Password? Isn't there like a save system by now? <laughs> Why are you using such archaic forms of saving, saving the progress?" And uh, she also has to do a bunch of reboots. So it's a bunch of basically like 
uh, SNES and NES style jokes for us, which I thought was really funny. And it does come back a little bit near the end when she comes back. Um, and then she sees, and then they see the reporter. So I have to correct this because some people corrected me on this. The reporter that was from the previous episode with Katsura is a different reporter. This reporter is the one that Kentucky actually likes. The one oh, with the pigtails okay. is the one he runs over. Remember when they were doing the thing when Sadaharu got all big and he ran her over? That's yes, the, I do remember that. that was, that's the two different reporters. So the one with pigtails okay. is the one that Gintoki doesn't give a shit about. And this one specifically, the one in this uh, style of episodes, is the one he cares about. So correction on that. But thank you for people reminding me on that. And uh, yeah, in general, I thought this was a good setup. I liked the end bit where it was like up until this up until the end point, everything was like kind of it's similar structure to the previous like more comedic episodes but then when they see her actually start crying and they realize like something's messed up something here is not right and they start taking it a lot more serious and this is funny because it's something that is true throughout the entirety of this even though this arc is in essence robot maids overtaking the city they still take it very seriously <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> At no point is anyone like, oh my god, they don't make any jokes about it. They're like, shit, this <laughs> this really sucks. They're more at the at the whole scene, but it's really funny that they, for something that should be so silly, it is taken 100% extremely serious. So I kind of like the, the ending setup there for that. And I did also like some of the early setup of trying to talk about like the creator of this specific robot like hits someone who the old man knows and he's just like i think he explains in the next episode their differences but he's just kind of like disappointed in the idea that he was still kind of trying making stuff like this and it didn't make sense for him as to why he was making it so yeah and also when they're doing all the famicom jokes that's when they find out that she was the one who is suspected for murder and that's when the people come in and are like uh they say they're from the magistry but then she makes a note that none of the people there, only one of them is human and the other two are robots and they attack. So, uh-huh. yeah, good setup for it. That's what I feel. You have anything specific here before we move on to the next one? No, I don't think so. It's mostly just a setup episode for uh, what is still what? to come. Yes. Okay. Let's go on to episode 70, which is... Uh, on Crunchyroll is called Too Many Cuties Can Make You Sick or as it's just called here Too Much Cute Stuff Can Be Revolting To the 70th episode yes so they are uh, I think the episode literally begins with uh, them fighting these giant maids um, Kentucky's fighting a bunch or not giant but this giant army of maids mm-hmm. um, him and Sadaharu Kentucky is Teaming yeah, up. Kentucky's fighting them off at first, and then Sadaharu jumps in to help. Um, or is that the end of? The, I can't remember if that's the end of the last episode. Or the beginning no, this, of this is the, one. Begin, the beginning of this one because I I, okay. I made a note of it because they're like he. It's the first time we've seen Sadaharu help in a fight. Yeah, it's like Sadaharu uh, jumps in and stops one of them that was gonna attack Kentucky from behind. Um, and then Kentucky like jumps on Sadaharu's back and starts riding him to safety like a like a horse. Mm-hmm. Um, they grab Kagura because Kagura's fighting them too. Kagura does a pretty sick move where she shoves the umbrella that she has into one of the maids' mouths and just yeah. shoots a bunch of bullets into her mouth. I was like, that's um, what you do when you don't care if the enemy is human. <laughs> yeah, that's the enemy's a... not human, so you don't have to give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like when uh, Batman fights um, Solomon Grundy and he's like, oh, this thing's immortal? I'm gonna fuck this thing. <laughs> yeah, this dude's immortal? I'm gonna fuck him up um <laughs> there's uh they, they start getting away uh but one of the maids who's like the the main like attack maid their names are all just numbers so i don't know yeah. which one they, what the name of it is it's but the, the main like yeah the pink haired maid that's attacking them um gintoki knocks its head off but it's still holding on to sadaharu's tail and they manage to escape because um Sadaharu shits on the ground and that like upsets it because it's got to clean because it's a maid. So they all rush to clean Sadaharu's poop, which lets them escape. Um, Shimpachi and the green headed, the green haired maid head yeah. um, are surrounded. And Shimpachi kind of gives this speech about like, 
even if I'm more likely to survive if I abandon you, I'm not going to. Um, that's because that's not what a samurai is. does. It's not like the samurai way. Uh, once a samurai has decided to protect something, he's going to protect it no matter what. Yeah. Which yeah. kind of makes some more emotion blossom in the uh, in, in the robot. Yeah. Um, and then she makes does a end note up of losing. It. Yeah, she does make a note of it, and, and uh, like thinking that samurai are like a big deal. Um, he uses a Dragon Quest reference to help her understand it better, which I thought was funny. Yeah. And then she does, um, she says, put it above the hero and the demon lord. And she's like, I've put it above the demon lord and is now with this. He's like, what hierarchy are you using? <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. Um, Shimpachi manages to take like the memory core out of the head and hide it in mm-hmm. time for the old man to get it um, before they're both captured by the army of maids. And then... Um, Gintoki and Kagura are there, kind of like talking through it. And um, the the whole city goes dark. Like, the whole city loses power. And they end up getting a shot from, like, the the head robot that is actually the original doctor, like, reincarnated in one of the robots. It's like his brain is in the robot. Yeah, so um, they, they reveal the... Because the old man is using some kind of TV to look up the specific... Because they have the memory core of uh, Tama, basically. And through that, they kind of say, like... They show the final moments of what Tama witnessed, which was that um, the main creator was killed, but in that instance, he actually became the robot, which is called number two. From number 502. He basically became that robot because he had because the what the main guy was trying to accomplish is that his daughter was sick and basically he experimented and tried to make it so that she could continue living on and basically live forever and eventually his plan was to eventually put her soul into the body of one of the robots and then somewhere along the way he realized that he wanted to live forever as well so he does the same experimentation on him except for something goes wrong in his experimentation so he does turn into the robot but what happens is that over time, the robot is basically like treating his memories as kind of like a bug and is slowly overwriting it. So over time, he's becoming less human and he's becoming more robot-like as his memories kind of get uh, trashed away and stuff like that. Um, and they show it like specifically when he dies, he literally turns into that robot and he is in essence just that guy now and he's now 100% him. But he's also not him because he's like... They say, they say specifically, it's like, it's a weird mixture where he's not himself anymore because whatever is, whatever was him is being erased or is being corrupted in some way. So it's not really him, but it is also Yeah, and they, they say one of the robots, I think the, the main girl one says that like, technically, yeah, it is, but like, I don't view him as the same person. Yeah, it's very similar to, if you saw WandaVision, <laughs> the ship of thesis <laughs> statement. Where at some point, is it really the ship of thesis, even if you replace a majority of the parts? It's very similar to that, but they don't ever mention it. But if it helps you to understand it, think of it kind of like that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they send Um, the message. Yeah, they send like a message that they're going to kill Shinpachi if they don't get the memory core that he hid from the robot girl at the last minute. Um, So... Kagura and uh, Gintoki get ready to go and attack them to try to rescue him. And then the old man's like, wait, I'm coming too. And they put the robot core, like from the from the good one, into the body of the pink-haired one that they destroyed earlier because it was still wrapped around Sadaharu. Uh, and then as they they gear up to battle, they end up busting out of the um, old man's shop in like a giant mecha tank. And he's like, "Yeah, this is a this is a this real is a man's, man's machine robot. right here." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned they, this is the episode where he mentions that um, the way he designs uh, robots are inelegant, but they're a man's man's robots, where his are made to be more feminine and more actual. Um, more like a human, yeah. Mm-hmm. And is and as such, he sees them as inferior robots compared to his because his robots are just straight up robots. But yeah, then this episode ends with another dramatic shot as they go in to go save Shinpachi. Which is another fantastic dramatic shot as they're all looking on. (laughs) It's really good. 
Yeah, there's a lot of really good like drama shots that yeah. are really funny. Mm-hmm. So, do you have any specific notes before I go into mine first? No, it was uh, it was it was pretty good. It was another episode where I was like, "Wow, what kind of how are we dragging a plot of of killer maids out for so long?" <laughs> but it's actually like pretty good. Yeah, while you're watching, it seems it, really stupid, but it's pretty good. Yes, it's because they take it so serious. At no point do they poke fun at the fact, like, "Huh, he's really gonna try and do it with the maids." It just literally is like, "No, this is his plot," and also things look very bad. So um, there is also a Full Metal Alchemist reference because this is a line that is said at one point. Um, but it was man creating man, forbidden technology that stepped over the boundaries of God. Which yeah, they is even it, show the Full Metal Alchemist like sigil yep, thing. <laughs> they do. Which I thought was a very good uh, reference in that point. Um, when they start doing their terrorist message, I think it's really funny because they show Katsura and Elizabeth looking on on the big screen. And at one point, Elizabeth puts up a sign that says, What the? Is this a new form of terrorism? <laughs> Just very confused about what's going on. He's like, What the? Okay. New new kids on the block. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see what they what Yeah, Elizabeth, I like how also Elizabeth is the one that questions it. By pulling yeah. up and saying, not Katsura? <laughs> nope, not him. <laughs> He's just kind of like watching. All right. I guess this is the direction Edo's taking. <laughs> just another thing to worry about for him. Um, but yeah, this episode was a lot of just like build up and backstory for the characters, specifically of Tama and her, the relationship with her and the professor and stuff like that. And it all kind of gets paid off in the next episode, but I thought it was... I was, like, interested throughout all of it. I was just kind of absorbing it, going, like, okay, okay, sure, let's go. I also like the kind of, like, um, the fake-out they do when it looks like Shinpachi is, like, 100% um, didn't make it and wasn't able to do anything. Because the old man says, like, I didn't see anyone here, so I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But he's, like, messing with the TV in the background. But then it reveals when they show the actual camera footage that someone was able to keep their stuff here. But he says um, what they have is, in essence, an empty case. So he Shinpachi was able to do something before he got captured, which was nice. It showed at least something. Shinpachi doesn't get to do much because he's not as strong as Gintoki. But for him to be able to do anything is a win in my book. Yeah. <laughs> as long as he helps in he some gets, way. He got some good combat against some of those maids. Yeah, he does. And I also really liked when they started fighting all the maids, too. <laughs> I thought it was very nice. It was very... Uh, yeah, the, like the opening battle scene? Yeah, it yeah, was good. Yeah. yeah, it was good stuff. But let's go on to the next episode, which is episode 71, which uh, Crunchyroll here has it. Um, some data cannot be erased. And they also have it as some data cannot be erased. Very, very um, fitting title for this. So go ahead, Zen. Yes. So before they had uh, busted out to go rescue Shinpachi, Gintoki gives the robot kind of a speech that's like, the important memories never fade, even if, you know, you get reset or whatever. Like, they'll always be part of you kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Again, kind of helping it grow a little bit as a human being instead of just a robot. Um, they are... Rushing through town on the giant tank uh, to get into the terminal, and once they do, there's like a giant robo maid um, that destroys the pathway that they're on. Uh, and they, the old man, well, actually, okay, before this, they're riding through the town, and the old man is like, "Quick, Kagura, pull on the handle of your umbrella," and she does, and it shoots like this giant energy blast. Yeah, and then she's like, "Oh, this is awesome." And she goes to do it again, uh, and soy sauce shoots out. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it only works one time. And after the first time, it just shoots soy sauce. He's like, yeah, it needs some time to recharge. So any other time after, it's just soy sauce. Yeah, and then... Uh... <laughs> um... He says to Gintoki to touch yeah, the Yeah, he handle. says, pull on the, pull on the hilt of your sword. And so Gintoki, like, dramatically angles his sword and, like, does this anime scream. And he pulls, and just soy sauce comes out. And he's like, yeah, all yours does is shoot soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like arguing about the, the importance of that. And he's like, um, hey, listen, having one tool that lets you stir your egg and rice and also use soy sauce at one time is pretty <laughs> valuable, okay? Um, trying so hard to justify it. Yeah. And then the um, 
the giant main robot attacks and destroys the pipe that they're on. And so the old man tells Sadaharu to grab everyone else and jump away. Um, and he stays behind to blow up part of a pipe so that they can get through. Um, they they manage to land in the pipe, but then the robo maid grabs it. So Kagura and Sadaharu also sacrifice themselves so that uh, the rest of them can keep going. Um, Gintoki, Gintoki wants to stop. goes after them. Yeah, Gintoki wants to go and save them, uh, and the maid stops him. And uh, it sounds like she's going to do the same thing she did with Shimpachi, where she's like, you have a blah 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 percent chance of survival. But instead, she's like, I'm telling you that it's pointless to go save them because they'll be okay. They're going to survive on their own because I choose to believe that they're going to live and that I have faith in them and all that stuff. So Gintoki decides to go with them. They start fighting the main robot, um, the main like robot guy. And then it turns out that he's basically Cell. And if you don't destroy his important core, he'll he'll never die. Yeah. Um, Which they actually find a way to beat Cell in a way that was like, why didn't they ever try this in Dragon Ball? <laughs> yeah, really. Um, so they Kagura and them do arrive at the last minute to help because um, the main robot kind of has Gintoki dead to rights, and it seems like he's taken over the other one, uh, like the main girl, but she kind of comes back to her senses and joins the good guys. Um, Kagura and them appear and help. And then um, Gintoki stabs him through the head and like pushes him into the energy beam that powers the city uh, to destroy his entire body at one time. So it will destroy his little uh, core as well. As he's starting to break free from the beam, uh, Shimpachi, Kagura, and the main girl also appear and attack him. And they kind of have this like tearful moment where she says goodbye to her father because she is the reincarnated quote unquote spirit of the daughter, and um, he is obviously the quote unquote reincarnated spirit of the father. Yeah, it seems like for that brief moment, there was like a brief window where both of them could understand. Yeah, what, where they could kind of communicate. Yeah, um, before things went back to the way it was. Yeah, the way so he dies. And then it turns out that the terminal is extremely damaged by what they did. And so the only way to fix it is that the old man says he's going to stay behind and try to save the day. But then the bridge collapses, and the only one on the other side is the main girl. So she takes off her communicator thing and throws it to the old man and tells him to just tell her what to do to fix it while she stays behind. Um, she is destroyed, but does save the day in the end. And then... Uh, Gin has the original head, the the green-haired one. Mm -hmm. Um, And it turns out that Kagura and Shimpachi had been fighting, like, black market gangsters to find all the cores for all of the leftover maid robots to try to find Mm -hmm. her original one. Mm -hmm. Um, And they did end up putting it uh, back into the green head, and it doesn't have any memories because it's been wiped, but it does still have, like, the original personality. Um, and she now lives in Otose's bar, and they're all like all the bar patrons like teaching her things because like she's a, a robot that doesn't have any memories. So it's become like a, a new thing there for them to go and like teach her what stuff is while they're drunk. Um, and Katsura is there also. Um, <laughs> yeah, and he's gonna teach her about like what a samurai is, but then she says she already knows, and uh, that triggers the memory in her head of Kagura, Shimpachi, and Gintoki. Yeah, she calls him her friends. And then I uh-huh. think uh, Katsura also says, like, that's not what a samurai is when she explains it in the Dragon Quest terms. And yeah, higher than the Dragon Quest evil king and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, that's not, that's not, not what a samurai is. <laughs> so yeah, this episode, it really drives home why I think Gintama has to have the episodes that it has. Because it needs to have those specific silly episodes to go for it. Because when this one showed up, it was like a gut punch by the end of it. How yes, how unbelievably, especially because this episode starts really funny when she's like doing. She starts when the old man gives her the disc is like do it now, and she starts playing dun da da dun da da dun da da dun da da dun 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 dun. And that's actually my favorite joke of the episode, not the Rocky song bit. But right after, when Gintoki yells, Adrian! <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. kills me. 
I also like when she starts trying to say, but because she has something in her mouth, she's trying to say, uh, gotta fly now, but she goes like, Phenomenon! <laughs> yeah, and I like, he's like, quick, use the disc! And she's like, alright, and she eats the disc, and it just starts playing music, and uh, he's like, yeah, it really hypes you up, you know? And Kentucky's like, is she just a fucking CD player? <laughs> he was right. <laughs> Yeah, the, that goes from there, and then the ending bit when she's like actually slow, basically slowly disintegrating, and she goes the her final things that she's like typing on it and saying like so pl- she's basically telling them as she's getting the instructions. So please, everyone, don't forget me. And then her like literal final words are looked at. I finally made friends, and I was like, oh, don't. Don't do this to me. Don't mm-hmm. don't take away. This... As she's like dissolving. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is incredibly sad. <laughs> so even when she comes back at the end, I, there was a, there's still a little bit of a bittersweet. It is nice to see that at least Tama gets to kind of function on, and they do mention that some memories, as the episode title says, they cannot be erased. So in a way, she will always remember them for the friends, even if she doesn't remember the specific moments from there. But I still thought it was very nice. And I did like also the setup we have there at the beginning where, as you said, when the old man and Sadaharu and Kagura all kind of sacrifice themselves, it looks like, to better th- to help out a friend to protect them, basically. Um, she still is pretty 100% confident they'll come back. It does kind of come back when she does her own sacrifice at the end and she actually is able to come back because of the specific faith that she has in her friends to kind of bring her back the best way that they can. So I thought that was a very nice thematic way of closing the loop on that specific thing. Is It was funny because I didn't even realize it until you started talking about it because I had just been so just engrossed in watching it, but actually seeing it through. She was actually learning from them and from them she was learning how to be kind of selfless and this is the way you act when you want to actually protect someone that you love. Um, I also like the fighting against the cell guy, um, the doctor, because (laughs) for one, it's really funny that he is basically cell and that he can regenerate Uh ad ad nauseum. Um, But I also like there's a part specifically where Gintoki just literally stabs him from through the fucking head (laughs) right before he's about to go take him down by putting him into the core. I thought that shot was really good. And he says to him, go the fool around with your maids in hell. Yeah. when he stabs up to the head. Yeah. <laughs> and then when all, f- all four of them jump in, which is Shinpachi, Tama and Kagura, and they all kind of push him forward into it. I just really like that shot in general in anime when all characters come together to push a villain just slightly forward. <laughs> I think it's good. Uh, I think that's what makes, that's probably one of the best reasons as to why, uh, for a brief moment, Gara was so good as a villain, is because when he was about to go, like, finish off Lee, basically, they all jump in to stop him. Like, that's just cool. (laughs) That's just really cool to see in general. Uh, So I like that shot of it. I also liked Gintoki completely destroying the doctor with facts and logics when he was like, did you even want a daughter? It sounded like you just wanted a maid. When he's, like, uh-huh. d- dressing down, basically, his entire operandi for doing anything. Like, uh, he's like, the truth is, is that you never cared specifically about her. The thing is that you just didn't want to be alone anymore. And this is an entirely selfish thing that you've done, basically. Um, I thought that stuff was really good. I liked it specifically that they also bring down the fact that the doctor, at this point, just didn't want to struggle anymore in his life. And he felt like... The pain of being a human was too much of a cost, but then Gintoki says, life is suffering. <laughs> to be human is to struggle. So that's why when women give birth, they have to struggle what feels like pulling, <laughs> giving birth to a watermelon, as I think what he said, or trying to destroy a watermelon with your thighs as the act of childbirth. <laughs> And then he says, or struggling is like when an artist, uh, (laughs) the struggle of an artist when it feels like you're pulling the universe out of your ass to try and make anything worth something. That's a struggle. And that's just what you have to deal with because as long as there's struggle, as long as you are human, you're always going to struggle. But there's always also going to be people there to be kind of pick you up with. So basically. But yeah. This episode was great. 
I absolutely love it. And then and also the bookend with the Dragon Quest stuff. I also really liked it how salty Catherine was that <laughs> this headless woman on a Famicom basically was more popular than her. Yeah, more popular than she was. Which is really funny. But it, and then another move of just like when he's saying specifically, are we not good enough? Because like, nah, both of you, the, the specific Patreon of Otose's bar says to both him and Catherine, no, you both are sexy. It's just a different thing. <laughs> Which is the first yeah, time I've Yeah, ever... like you don't have enough youth. Yeah, you don't have that youth to you, which is like fair enough. They don't. <laughs> That's probably the one thing you can, the one thing you can, for definitely say about the both of them is that they don't have the youth. But yeah, I thought this episode was great, and it was another good reminder as to why, um, I'm so in love with a lot of what <laughs> Gintama does. Because <laughs> this episode had me so readily and so easily, and I was like, God damn! Especially that final moment, the final touching moment. It it really dawns on you that, yes, you do need... It, it, can you have a series in which a female ninja shoves stuff up a man's ass and also have an ex- extremely beautiful send-off for a robot made? And the answer is yes. <laughs> if you yes, try for sure it. Can. <laughs> so that's how I feel. Do you, what are your specific things here, Zen? Uh, most of the same stuff. I thought it was really good. I liked... Uh... A lot of the emotional stuff they did with the sacrifice at the end, um, I kind of saw it coming, because, you know, in true Gintama fashion, like, if you're not part of the main cast, you can't persist <laughs> past yeah. your your episode debut. So, like, I knew she wasn't going to make it. Um, she was going to go somewhere. And as soon as they were like, uh-oh, it's starting to explode, I was like, yeah, no, she's fucked. Um, but it was a very, a very sweet little send-off where she kind of she got to save the day, and she got to make friends in the end, and uh, I liked when she asked them never to forget her, and they screamed her name into the little, like, mic right as she died. thought that was cute. Um, it was real good. It was real good. Yes. Fantastic stuff. And, man, that was episodes 66 through 71. A hell of a journey. <laughs> Six episodes is a lot to talk about, by the way, as well. So we're going to be looking forward to... Next episode is going to be four episodes, as we're going to do episodes um, 72, 73, 74, and 75. So it'll be a simple four episodes for next week. But then, the week after, it's six again, because it's it's an entire arc again. Another basic big one, (laughs) as it's six episodes in one. (laughs) Not six episodes in one, but it's a six-episode arc, basically. So we'll see how that goes as we go through them. But yeah, that's the end of the show, everyone. So as promised, I've put down my end of statement there. So in your face, Zen, I fucking remember. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you very much, everyone. We thank you a whole bunch for watching. Um, You can watch Zen over on his channel where he talks Shonen Jump manga. If you haven't had enough of Shonen Jump talk, he talks with the Ocean Man. Uh... If you want to hear more about Modern Jump as it comes out, you can do it there. Uh, for If you are looking for more stuff featuring me, you have my channel right here. I do stuff I sometimes that are, is not Shonen Jump related. I play for Go, and I occasionally play Yu-Gi-Oh, and I fuck around and do stuff. So if you, it's the perfect <laughs> channel for that. So we thank you guys for the whole bunch for your support. You guys always, you can leave a like, comment down below, tell us about how anything you feel. And we'll see you guys next time. So now, Zen, say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. We did it. Boom! (laughs) Ending episode. Let's go! (laughs) 